Father, we ask you to bless our hearts today as we enter upon the word of God. Send us an anointing from heaven that will make the difference between life and death, between hope and despair, sickness and health, poverty and wealth, and above all, be between eternal life and eternal death. Speak to our hearts, we pray. Please yourself in this service. We vow to give you the glory, the honor, and the praise in Jesus' name. Amen. Please be seated. Death is everywhere and is almost in everything. It is the inevitable of life that is inescapable by all. Death is in the car which we ride or drive. Death is in the house. Death is in the aircraft. Death is in the ship or in the boat. Death is on the bike or even the bicycle. Death is in the sea. Death is in the river. Death is even in the medication. Yes, death is in the medication. Death is in the swimming pool and even the bathtub. Death is also in the foods that we eat to sustain physical life. Death is even in the food. Death is everywhere and it's almost in everything. Oh my God, what a dichotomy. My message, to the, my message today is to encourage all of us to choose life. Tell your neighbor, choose life. Amen. Choose life which is abundant in Jesus Christ. Life and death, you'll agree with me, are the representatives of blessing and cursing according to the scripture. And also the representatives of good and evil. When you look into the Holy Scriptures, the Bible, both testaments, old and new, are replete. So the word replete means full. Full of the manifestations of both blessing and cursing. Good and evil. Their literal and physical manifestations have been seen and felt by individuals, by families, by communities, by countries, and even by continents. The physical and literal manifestation of death and life, blessing and cursing, are felt in all of those spheres. Psalm 75 and verse 8 bears it out. Isaiah 51 and verse 17 bears it out. Habakkuk chapter 2 and verse 16 bears it out. And 1 Corinthians 10 and verse 16. They all bear it out that the pouring out of that which in God's cup upon mankind. Sometimes it's a pouring out of blessing. Sometimes it's a pouring out of cursing. Sometimes it's a pouring out of life. And sometimes it's a pouring out of death. These manifestations have been visibly seen and felt by all that I have mentioned. 
My brothers and sisters, each day as we go along, we are either the recipients of or the participants in blessing or cursing, good or evil, life or death. I will repeat. As we go along from day to day, we are either the recipients of or the participants in blessing or cursing, good or evil, life or death. Over 4,000 years ago, a man named Moses, upon God's instructions, he addressed a people of design and a people of destiny. From the text that was read in Deuteronomy chapter 30, he said to them, For this commandment which I command thee this day, it is not hidden from thee, neither is it far off. It is not in heaven that thou should say, Who shall go up for us to heaven and bring it unto us? that we may hear it and do it. Neither is it beyond the sea that thou should say, who shall go over the sea for us and bring it unto us that we may hear it and do it. But the word is very nigh unto thee in thy mouth and in thine heart that thou mayst do it. See, I have set before thee this day Life and good, and death and evil. I go down to verse 19. I call heaven and earth to record this day against you that I have set before you life and death, blessing and cursing. Therefore, choose life that both thou and thy seed may live, that thou mayest love the Lord thy God, and that thou, thou mayest obey his voice, and that thou mayest cleave unto him, for he is thy life and the length of thy days, that thou mayest dwell in the land which the Lord swear unto thy fathers, to Abraham, to Isaac, and Jacob, to give them. Choose life. Tell yourself, I choose life. Tell your neighbor, choose life. Hallelujah. The book of Deuteronomy is unique in many sense because it is a review of the law which was given to Israel by Moses. There was a necessity for a review of this law because the older generation had died in the sojourn and this new generation now emerged needed to be told of the God who has delivered Therefore, fathers out of bondage. They need to be told of the many miracles that God did. They need to be told of the many years of untold sufferings that their forefathers endured in Egypt. They also need to be told of how they cried unto God and how God supernaturally intervened having heard their prayers and the tears he saw and raised up a man named Moses. They needed to be reminded. Well, the older ones needed to be reminded, those who were yet alive, and the younger ones need to be told. Are you with me? You see, it's very important for us to understand a little about history because if we do not understand history, we do not have a template to guide us in the future. Some folks love to erase the steps of the past 
And there's a common saying around many countries, I suppose, certainly in Jamaica, that it is young people time now. It's young people time. So we must put the whole the ones on the shelf. And young people, sad for some of them, do not know how we have reached where we are today. Come on, somebody. They do not know the pathway that has led us to where we are today. So somebody need to say, roll back the curtains. Tell your neighbor, roll them back. Roll back the curtains of memories now and then. Show me where you brought me from. And where I could have been. Remember, I'm a human. And it is human to forget. So remind me. Lift your hand and say, remind me. Why I feel I'm going to preach, you know. Remind me, dear Lord. Hallelujah. Do not take things for granted. Do not take people for granted. Do not take institutions for granted. They have been established for a purpose. To provide leadership and guidance, discipline and training as generations emerge. Come on somebody. So if we were to erase history, nobody would be able to be guided in the future because we would repeat some terrible mistakes that others have made. Are you with me somebody? Hallelujah to the Lamb. So Moses was God's ambassador to the children of Israel and he represented God well. Are you there? He represented God well. Oh, praise the name of Jesus. It was not an easy task for leader Moses because he made many excuses to God why someone else should be assigned that monumental task. But when God has chosen you, you are the ones chosen. Somebody say something. Moses' particular task at that point, amen, was to let Israel know we have already crossed the Red Sea, but there is the Jordan yet to be crossed. Come on, somebody. Somebody here today, you have crossed many valleys and you have crossed many hills and mountains. But I'm here to tell you it's not over as yet. The sojourn continues. Some of you got one more valley and one more hill. Some of you got one more trial and you have another tear to shed. You may not know it, but there is another curve in life's road. Oh, glory to God. There is yet one more mile to go. Oh, hallelujah. So you got to gird up the loins of your mind and be strong. Because it's not over until it's over. And it is not over as yet. Tell your neighbor, it's not over as yet. Hallelujah. So not because you've had a tremendous miracle of crossing the Red Sea. Do not throw away your stick. Because there is a river named Jordan. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Oh, God, help me in this church today. <laughs> Hallelujah. But I'm glad for the child of God. We don't have to cross our Jordan alone. God said, I'll never leave you nor forsake you. I'll be with you when you go out. I'll be with you when you come in. I'll be with you in your ups and I'll be with you in your downs. I'll be with you in your valleys. I'll be with you on your mountains. I will walk with you in your defeats and I will celebrate with you your victory. He is the all time undefeated. God who never leave us nor forsake us. I feel like praising the God of heaven. 
if some of you don't feel like praising him I don't know who you're going to praise but as for me and my house and I don't care who is in my house not praising God if I'm the only one who is going to praise him I'm going to praise him I will bless him at all times his praise somebody open your mouth and shout something some of you are a little too dignified for Holy Ghost Church you're a little too sanctimonious for spirit filled church you're a little too sophisticated for fire baptized church when you get in this atmosphere you lay your sophistication aside and open up to the power of the Holy Ghost for it is not by might nor by power it is by my spirit said the Lord somebody lift your hand and shout I choose life hallelujah Woo! God Almighty I choose life So brother Moses mm, Standing on the plains of Moab Standing on the plains of Moab He records this particular chapter And the 19th verse He said I call heaven and earth to record this day against you that I have set before you life and death blessing and cursing therefore choose life that both thou and thy seed may live choose the abundant life in Jesus Christ and live forever Choose the abundant life in Jesus Christ and live abundantly whilst you are here and prepare for eternal abundance when we leave here. Brothers and sisters, God wanted them to understand and he wants us to understand today that life and death, good and evil, they inch on obedience and disobedience. I'll repeat. Life and death, good and evil, the platform for both is either obedience or disobedience. You obey God and you receive the life of Christ and live abundantly. You disobey God and then you receive the flip side of that, the curses that come to the disobedient. Isaiah puts it this way in chapter 1 and verse 19. He didn't mince words. He said, if you be willing and obedient, you shall heat the good of the land. But if you refuse and rebel... You shall be devoured at the sword, for the mouth of the Lord has spoken it. And whatever comes out of the mouth of the Most High shall not return unto him void. Somebody shout something down there. So life and death really speak of blessing and cursing. Obey God's commands and be blessed. Disobey God's commands and be cursed. You would have noticed the instructions of Joshua in chapter 1, verses 7 and 8. God said to him, stay in this book. Do not let this book of the Lord depart out of your mouth. Meditate therein day and night. And when you do so, you shall do two things. You shall make your way prosperous. And you shall have good success. Somebody praise him there. Stay in the book. Obey the book. You will be prosperous. And you will have good success. You will have the abundant life that Jesus gives to those who trust him. 
And those who love him and serve him, somebody shout something. So God's what God wants is spirit to people to be blessed, not to be cursed. Lift your hand and say, I am the blessed. He wants us to live what is called the Zoe life. Amen. The God type of life. The God type of life which in every situation you know how to abase and how to abound. And nothing will ever get you down to the point where the devil can have you lose your faith and your hope and your confidence in God. That's the Zohe life. That's the abundant life. In everything you will be a thanksgiving person. In everything you give thanks. Oh, you're not getting this. When you have the Zohe life, the life of Christ, I repeat, in everything you give thanks because you say this is the will of God in Christ Jesus concerning me. And that is not for the almost persuaded. That is for the fully persuaded. That is not for those who are living on the fringes of Christianity, living on the periphery. This is for those who have sold themselves out to the Lord. For those who have said, entreat me not to leave thee, nor to return from following after you. Anywhere you go, I will go. Where you lead me, I will follow. I'll go with you all the way. Somebody lift your hand and shout all the way with Jesus. Choose life. These days, can I say it this way? Oh yes, I will. These days it appears as though some folks are simply joining a church to be part of a fellowship. Joining a church to see what benefits they can get. Joining a church simply because they want to secure themselves a good funeral. Joining a church maybe because I'll get a good sanctified wife or a good sanctified husband. I'll find me some good friends. Honey, let me tell you, while all those things are part and parcel of God's blessing package for his people, the reason to be in church, the reason to be in church, first and foremost, is to secure your soul for eternity. So even if you come in the church and you find more foes than friends, stay with Jesus. Oh, some of you ain't going to take this. You come in the church and you find things have not worked the way you thought they would, stay with Jesus. Hallelujah. Because if you were to gain the whole world and to lose your soul, it profit nothing. Somebody shout something here. So in choosing the life of Jesus Christ, you are not necessarily choosing a life of flamboyancy and a life of prestige and a life of glamour and a life of fame first of all you are choosing a life of suffering oh no bishop you can't say that I say it again you are choosing a life of suffering for if any man will come after me let him deny himself Take up the symbol of death and follow me. When they love you, follow me. When they hate you, follow me. When they bless you, follow me. When they curse you, follow me. When things did not work the way you planned them, follow me. When some enemies rise up against you in the very church, follow me. When the bucket bottom drop out on you, follow me. When you have no food to eat, follow me. When, amen, everything is going bad, follow me. Can I preach this kind of gospel in this age and time? When everybody wants to hear 
it's prosperity is prosperity honey you know I believe in the prosperity of body soul and spirit but honey it doesn't just come like that without a price there is no price without some sweat there'll be no sweet without some pains there'll be no gains hallelujah when you make up your mind to follow Jesus it's not an easy road when you choose a life of Christ it's not an easy road you gotta deny yourself somebody shout something here hallelujah following Jesus Christ is not about your church it's not about your pastor your bishop nor your elder it's not about your minister it's about a relationship that you have with Jesus Christ and it doesn't matter who feel you must stand flat-footed and say I know in whom I believe and I am persuaded that he is able to keep that which I have committed unto him against that can I preach strong gospel in this place hallelujah it's not a bed of roses honey many are the toils on the way oh hallelujah oh hallelujah but thank God for amazing grace lift your hand and praise him for amazing grace hallelujah hallelujah some of us are saying today if it had not been the Lord on our side some of you would not know us as Christians you would know us as rum drinkers know us as harlot and prostitute know us as gamblers and thieves and liars and gunmen you don't want me to preach the gospel know us as ganja smokers and men stealers and women stealers but because of amazing grace having chosen the life of Jesus Christ we make sacrifice to live for him somebody praise him here hallelujah hallelujah and our single unsaved brothers and single unsaved sisters many of us have walked those roads and when your body feel for sex and is burning in your soul and heart you go down on your knees and you say my body is a temple of the living God I will not defile my temple no sex out of marriage no sex until I'm married because Jesus is coming soon and I want to be ready to meet him somebody said choose life said choose life choose life choose holy life hallelujah somebody shout another praise there glory to God choose life choose blessings Moses in addressing Israel in this very book of Deuteronomy Deuteros Namos the second law he said to them God wants me to remind you of head fundamental things as you continue your journey heading to the Red Sea, heading to the Jordan before you go over you need to recognize some things you can't just go over so some people just come in a church and just want to go over so can I talk the truth in this house others are laboring for night and day and years and I've not crossed over amen to an extent in the natural in the physical or even the spiritual some just come in with head knowledge with an agenda can I be real like I've always been I have heard by the way and Paul said some things are heard second Corinthians chapter 5 he said I heard that means somebody told him I've heard that in churches these days when because the crisis for husband seemed to be so great whenever the young men get converted 
and get baptized in church or churches. Do you have some sisters who are checking them out? You have anybody? God say you ought to be my husband. Are you not saying nothing? Brother, any sister come check you out. I don't want to tag you and label you. Are you not saying nothing? That sister doesn't know who she really is. That sister is on a mission. Wrong mission. Somebody say something over here in the morning. Wrong mission. Come on, somebody. Hallelujah. So they say the crisis is on and God helps those who help themselves. And they say the scripture say you must ask and it shall be given. They say you must seek. So nothing wrong left me sick. Well, let me tell you the old-fashioned way how we sought God. We sought him on our knees in prayer, in fasting, in supplication. And he comes through in the fullness of his own time. Are oh, you not saying nothing? God says, I want you to remember some things. He said, I want you to remember the giving of the law. Deuteronomy chapter 4, verses 9 and 10. Remember the law that I gave. He said, I want you, number two, to remember the covenant that I established with you. Deuteronomy chapter 4 and verse 23. He says, remember the past slavery of your life. Deuteronomy 5 and verse 15. He says, remember the great deliverance that I gave to you. Deuteronomy 7 and verse 18. He says, remember the divine leadership that brought you out of Egypt. Deuteronomy 8 verses 2 through 6. And he says in chapter 9 and verse 7, remember the sins of the past. Remember the law, number one. Remember the covenant, number two. Remember your past slavery, number three. Remember the great deliverance, number four. Remember the divine leadership, number five. And remember the sins of the past, number six. Brothers and sisters, why is God saying all of this? There is a reason why God wanted them to be reminded. You know why? Because people are prone to make the same mistake over and over and over again. Are you with me? God wanted them to be reminded with a view that they will not return and repeat those stupid mistakes. Those that they have made. Lift your hand and say, remind me, Lord. Oh, God Almighty. You know, it is said, hindsight is 2020. After the event, you see better than before the event. Some person is saying, if I knew now, if I knew then what I know now. Anybody here saying that? Lift your hand and wave your hand if you're saying that. Come on. The whole of we can say that, you know. So I'm going to play cute like, oh. If I knew then what I know now, God Almighty, no way would I have walked a certain path. No way would I have kept a certain company. No way would I have done certain things certain way. No way would I put my life in such a precarious position. No way. No way would I have one, two, three, four, five children out of wedlock. No way. No way would I have given up my virginity as carelessly as I gave it up. 
You don't want me to preach. Nowhere would I fall into adultery or the fornications that I fall into. No way. No way. If I knew then what I know now, some of you would be free, single, and disengaged, and would be living a fulfilled life. Than the miserable wreck that you are today, excuse me, please, because you walked out of God's will and do your own thing. You simply did it your way. Oh, much more than this, I did it my way. Tell your neighbor, choose life. Oh God Almighty, tell them again, choose life. Mm, oh God of heaven, somebody wave your hand in this anointing. Let him touch you, let him touch you, let him touch you. Let him touch you. If I knew then what I know now, no way would I be a school dropout. I'd pursue advanced education and position myself to be all I can be under God in this society somebody say something I knew then what I know now no way would I have walked out of my parents house through rebellion and joined the boys on the corner join the girls in the streets and now I am saying wasted years, wasted years. Oh, how foolish as I wandered in darkness and fear. But today you can turn around, turn around. God is calling, he's calling you from a life of wasted years. Choose the abundant life in Jesus Christ and live abundantly. God, if somebody prays him here, some of you looking at me like I'm not preaching, but I know some of you missed the boat by far and you want to live your life over again, honey, you can't live it over again. You have to continue from where you are. But as a Christian, God give you a brand new slate. He removed the sins of the past. And he said, hey, I give you a brand new start. Any man being Christ is a new creature. All things are passed away and behold. All things become new. Why not praise him? Why not praise him? Why not praise him? Mm. God Almighty. The prodigal boy in Luke chapter 15, I believe, he might have used those words in the pig pen. If I knew then what I know now, I would have listened to my father. I would have taken his instruction, obeyed his command. Are you not saying nothing? I would have but I ran away and lived righteously and look at where I am today don't blame people for your mistake blame yourself take responsibility we love to find too many scapegoats now you cause it now you cause it husband blame wife wife blame husband Children blame whomever they so choose. Members blame pastor. Pastor blame members. Government blame citizens. Citizens blame government. Everybody must take responsibility. You don't want me to preach. Man, stand up for the right in St. Thomas as a commanding officer, and it seems somehow to give him hell. Amen. Want to, want to, want to, want to ship him out of there because the leadership is too strong. 
Are you not saying nothing? Everybody looking for a weak fence to lean on so you can break out and do your own thing. But that's not the way civilized societies govern. There must be law and order to guide people. Every man cannot become a law to himself. We cannot have all loose cannons all over the place. Unguided missiles can take down anybody at any time and anywhere. Are you not here with me? Too many unguided missiles are released in our society. Released from the universities. Released from the high schools and colleges. Released from even some of our churches people who do not have a relationship with God but become rebellious run out of them church and gone out there said they are preachers and evangelists and this and that and the other and have not yet even solidified their position in Christ choose life God what a preaching my God somebody shout something here Folks who do not know their head from their toes. Mm. God says, remember. Remember. Tell your neighbor, remember. Coming down, don't worry. Seven and eight, God says, remember the divine judgment that I poured out Deuteronomy chapter 24 and verse 9. And number eight, God says, remember the great Remember the great I am. When I sent Moses down there. And he asked me who should I tell them send me. I need a name. I need to be a, an identity. An identified person. God said tell them. Tell your neighbor tell them. Mm. Tell them the I am. That I am. Has sent me to deliver you and they are going to give you a fight but I'm going to establish life in the midst of death come on somebody I'm come down to give them life and more abundant life I'm getting them out of this death trap that they have been in for over 400 years lift your hand and say oh God get me out of this do I have anybody sincerely saying that this morning? Lift your hand and say, oh God, oh God, oh God, get me out of this, take me out of this, deliver me out of this. Ayumushakota, deliver me out of this God, I can't take Egypt's bondage anymore. Tired of fear as lash whip. Tired of building cities with bricks and blocks and mortar. Tired of rising up early at the sound of fearless trumpet. Tired of slave labor. Tired. I am not an Egyptian, I'm an Hebrew. How on earth I'm living in this Egyptian situation. Lift your hand and say, get me out, get me out. Say, take me out, take me out, take me out. My God Almighty. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Take me out. I want to get out of this. Hallelujah. I am tired, God. I am weary. I am worn. I need help. Lift your hand and shout help, help, help. Lady, open your mouth and shout help. Shout help. I will lift up my eyes unto the hills. From whence I feel God in my soul. Come at my help. Help, 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 help. Egypt burning hot. Egypt is on fire. Egypt sucking out my life. Egypt destroying me. Egypt has me under bondage. Help! My God, somebody get radical. Put on your Bible. Jump to your feet. Lift up both of your hands and cry for help. Help! Help! Shen 
shekota. Help, 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 help. Send thou help from the sanctuary. Strengthen me out of Zion. Strengthen me out of Zion.
revelation of all of those. But thank God we have also seen the manifestation of good soil believers. Good soil. Let every good soil believer lift your hand and say, Thank you, Jesus. It's not little some of us have been through. Hey, God Almighty. But I've been through enough to know that God is enough for me. He has come through so many times. That puts my mind at ease for good. And I take my very life that God will take care of me. Because I've been through enough. I've been through battles many. Oh God Almighty. I've been through foes many. Traps have been snapped. Snares have been set. Pits have been dug. But today, I started loving Christ again. Oh, I feel the Holy Ghost. For I'm right back where I was before I'd sinned. I gave my life to him. He took my everything. And today, I started loving Christ again. 1 Corinthians chapter 10, verse 5. But with some of them. 1 Corinthians chapter 10 and verse 5. Find it, please. Because we're not wasting words in this place. What your Bible says, sir? Many. What your Bible says? Many, sir. What your says? Many. All right. But with many of them. God was not well pleased. Why? For they were overthrown in the wilderness. God said, me no want this happen to who know. I do not want this to happen to you. Why? Now these things were our examples. To the intent. That number one, we should not lust after evil things as they lusted. Tell your neighbor, no lusting. Mm. Jesus. Neither be he idolaters as was some of them. Tell your neighbor, no idolatry. As is written, the people sat down to eat and drink. And rose up to play. Neither let us commit fornication as some of them committed. And in one day, 23,000 died for the sins of fornication. Tell your neighbor, no fornication. No adultery. No lesbianism. No homosexuality. You don't want me to preach. Could I say some more things, you know? But let me stay a little more decent. God Almighty. One day, one single day, 23,000 fornicators died. God said, My heart bled, bled. His heart bled when he saw the waste of life, the waste of potential. The waste of ministry. The waste of choir members and preachers and all categories of church workers who died in the wilderness because of lusting, idolatry, fornication. Some of you looking on me funny. But this homosexual wave is taking over the country. Jesus Christ. And even some of you in the church, you know the word of God. You know that that's a sin from hell. Like all other sins are from hell. But you know God destroyed two massive cities. 
Sodom and Gomorrah for the sins of homosexuality. And leaders around the world are doing everything to legalize and legitimize the deeds of hell. And leaders and government have taken their pens and have signed into law same-sex marriage, man on man, woman on woman. Not even dogs don't accept that. <laughs> Excuse me, excuse me. You can't bring that to your bulldog. Excuse me, please. You can't bring that to your ram boat. You can't bring that to your bull cow. Jesus, Jesus, Jesus. Mm. Let's finish. Let's finish. Verse, where are we? Verse 9. Neither let us tempt Christ, as some of them also tempted and were destroyed. Of serpents. Neither murmur he. As some. Of them also murmured. And were destroyed. Of the destroyer. Now all these pages. Of histories have been. History have been written unto them. For our example. And they are written for our. For our admonition. Upon whom. The ends of the world. Are come. Wherefore, let him that thinketh he standeth take heed. See, fall. I'm sure you are close this now. Close this now. Yeah. Let him that thinketh he standeth take heed. See, fall. I was in Florida the other day. The minister invited me to sit with himself on his board to do some strategic planning, short, medium, and long term, because God has blessed them with a beautiful facility, massive building, land space, space they don't even know what to do with. So we sat and we discussed short, medium, and long term plan. But this is what I want to say. The building they were in at 727 South 21st Avenue in Hollywood, they worshipped in that building from Pastor Rose through to the other day for over 18 years, thereabout. They moved out of the building and they went back in to do some little cosmetic fixing up to turn it back over to the owner. While they were standing in the building, the men just got through putting, up, putting back a wall in place, etc. They were standing there and out of nowhere, the entire roof over the rust drum -dum -bum! collapsed and dropped in the church. Minister said to me, Jesus Christ, Bishop, we could have been in here one Sunday morning worshiping and choir, musicians, ministers. You could have heard that you are mass death. What happened? Some little things named termites. Let him that think it he stand. That's my message. Take heed. Lest he fall. Some little things we call them chichi or termites. Entered into the roof. And maybe for years those termites have been there, heating away, little by little by little by little. Until one day nothing was left to hold the roof. You don't get the message. 
those who are harboring termites in your soul you have some termites that you have not sprayed you have not called in the spray people to spray the malice to spray the resentment to spray the hate and the bitterness in your heart but we are going on same way we are singing we are preaching we are praying we are prophesying we are doing everything same way and everybody on outside think everything is all right one day one day one day god have mercy if you don't kill them chichi Oh, how me preach. If you don't kill them termites, that's heating out your soul, sucking out your spiritual juice. One day when you think it's peace and safety, he who thinks is building is standing firm. She who thinks are building is standing When the owner came, the owner was right there, you know. The owner of the building was right there. Right there. And just give the revelation. When your owner comes, and my owner comes, and look on the building that is being turned over to him by power of faith. By this church, that church, the other 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 church. After years of fasting and prayer, toil and labor, blood, sweat and tears. We turn over you to God. And God look for you. Cradadam-bam! Suffer loss. You did not take time to deal with the termites. Tell your neighbor, choose life, choose life, choose life. Oh God, let me stop right now. I took more than the five minutes, but Jesus gives good life, He gives real life, He gives the abundant life, He is the bread of life. Heat him and live. He is the water of life. Drink him and quench your thirst. He is everything you need today. Eat and live, drink and live. Unsaved, you need the life of Christ in you. Backsliders, you need the life of Christ. Christians, we need to manifest more and more the real life of Jesus Christ. Bow your heads with me, please. What more can I say? Oh, no. The only cry in my heart is for Jesus the only longing that I have is for him I am willing to die if it only satisfies this longing
pray to God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Pray, pray, pray. Hallelujah. God, we give you all the glory. We give you all the honor. We give you all the praise. Hallelujah. The only longing in my heart is for Jesus. Hallelujah. I am willing to die if it only satisfies this longing in my heart for the Lord. Father, we come before your presence this morning because we have no other refuge that we can turn to. Hallelujah. We lift our hands to thee, God, because we know no other help. We look to the hills from whence come our help this morning. Lord God, in this life there is so much things, Lord God, that leads to death. But you offer us eternal life and you say to us, choose life. Lord God, we come before you this morning. Lord God, with so many things militating against our health, our wealth, our well-being, God, our minds, our state of being. Lord God, that will lead to death, but you have given us life. Lord God, the enemy is out to sift your people as we, Lord God. Lord God, to separate them from the fall, God, to pluck them out of your hands. But you said, God, that those who you have in your hands, God, no man can pluck them out, Lord Jesus. This morning, God, some persons are bound by the shackles of sin. Oh, God Almighty, and the wages of sin is death, Lord God. But you have offered eternal life, and I pray this morning that you will stretch down your hands of love God and rescue someone God who is on their way to hell Lord God Lord Jesus somebody is walking enjoying the pleasures of this world God but the end thereof are the ways of death the scripture remind us God that there is a way that seemeth right unto a man but the end thereof are the ways of death I pray Lord God that you will rescue somebody this morning Lord Jesus somebody has given up on life God this morning and somebody seem that there is no more hope God but in you there is hope and I pray God that you will speak to a soul this morning and encourage somebody in the name of Jesus Christ hallelujah Lord God somebody may Lord God might be in hell this morning but just as you when you rose from the dead and you went into hell and took the keys lord god i pray that even now that you'll rescue somebody's soul from hell this morning somebody lord god who feels like they are the end of their rope god and they feel like throwing in the towel i pray lord god that you will speak to their hearts again remind them god how good you've been lord god and how you brought them out lord jesus i pray lord god almighty that somebody his heart that may be hardened this morning that you will take away the heart of stone and give them a heart of flesh in the name of Jesus Christ we cramp and we paralyze every plan of the enemy this morning Lord God the enemy comes to steal to kill and destroy but you have come that we might have life and that we might have it more abundantly in the name of Jesus Christ I pray God that every stronghold that is over your people God will be broken in the name of Jesus Jesus every demonic attack Lord God that has been launched we pray oh God that you reverse them in the name of Jesus and set your people at liberty God we thank you for the word that has come this morning Lord Jesus somebody may have felt like they want to give up Lord God but here God we are reminded to choose life and so God I pray Lord Jesus that you will touch somebody God that they will shake themselves together like David Lord God when he said Oh my soul, why art thou disquieted in, within me? Hope thou in God, for I shall yet praise him who is the health of my countenance. Lord God, let somebody look up to you, Lord God. Our shield and buckler. Make a way, Lord God Almighty, when there is no way. Because you specialize, Lord Jesus Christ, in things that seems impossible. We pray, oh God, that you will do a new thing among us today, God. And bring your people, God, to a new level, Lord God. We will worship you in the beauty of holiness. And Lord God, by reason of our living, by reason of our life, Lord God, it will be a personal testimony. And somebody will be led to you, Lord Jesus Christ. Christ even if we never utter a word God just by our lifestyle God somebody will be compelled to serve you and to know this God that we speak so eloquently about Lord God even right now God do Lord Jesus Christ that which we fail to ask of you God because
because we are limited. We ask you to take over even now. We give you all the praise, all the glory, and the honor in the righteous name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Somebody just lift hallelujah. your voice and shout hallelujah. 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 Yeah. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Hallelujah.